Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Bottom. This is the former station house of a long abandoned train line running between Ballinamore and Ballyconnell in the northeast of County Leitrim, Ireland. The station was called Garadice after a nearby loch or lake, but its days of issuing tickets and keeping passengers warm on chilly winter nights are long gone because about 25 years ago, Garadice station house was turned into a cottage, extended on both sides as you can see, and its three acres of grounds transformed into what might be called a permaculture food forest. But now, in August 2022, all of that is for sale for the modest price of 120,000 euros. But what exactly do you get for your money? Well, I'm here to explore for the first time and see for myself. I'm going to take you on a tour through the house and around the land, and then I'm going to evaluate this forgotten station house and its three acres of land as a potential small holding here in the west of Ireland. First though, a quick reminder that I am in no way affiliated with the owner of this property and receive no fee or commission for its sale, so what you'll hear from me throughout this video are my own views, both the good and the bad. These videos give me the opportunity to explore this beautiful and magical country where I've lived now for well over a decade, and in this case, perhaps also discover what I think could be a fascinating piece of Irish history. But could it be your future home, I wonder? If you are interested in buying this property, then you'll find contact details for the seller down in the description. I have nothing to do with the sale, so please contact them directly. Right, I'm itching to explore this place, so let's get started. So this is the master bedroom, and it's absolutely huge, at least by my standards. Um, it's got a walk-in wardrobe. Gosh, just about everything you could want in here. And loads and loads of space. It's got a beautiful floor. It looks immaculate. It looks like it was renovated a few years ago. Really, really nice. This is without doubt the pièce de résistance of this property, the kitchen. It's gorgeous. It's big. It's that proper light open country kitchen that everyone dreams of having. You could easily see 10 people in the middle of this room. It's got um, a proper stove which I'm told heats five radiators, so yes, there is uh, central heating within this house. And uh, everything you could want is here. It feels really open, huge great windows on both sides. Um, a walk-in pantry, which is definitely fully equipped. My goodness, you can make a lot of jam with all this gear. And attached to the kitchen, you've got a little sitting room or lounge um, with its own wood-burning stove. Gosh, I bet it's cosy in here in the winter months. Especially knowing that just outside, you've got all those trees enclosing you. It does feel kind of like you're in the middle of a forest here. Very snug. So this is where this house gets really really unusual because through this curtain and door is the original station house um, and this room has been turned into a utility room so we've got sink dishwasher all your amenities lots and lots of fridges and freezers um, but originally this would have been the ticket office so this worktop wouldn't have been here and instead you would have had through this open window, an area where the tickets would have been sold. So someone would have been standing here selling tickets to the customers uh, for their train ride. Isn't that an amazing thought? I'd love to step back in time and be able to see that happening. So the original house is actually really small. Um, the ticket office at the back and this area here is where the customers for the train would have sat and waited for it to arrive. It's now been turned into a, I guess, a kind of sunroom. It's very warm in here. I'm sure it absorbs a lot of heat through that uh, roof and uh, these big open windows. But of course, there's lots of trees and bushes out there too, so it still feels very cozy. 
So the original station house is the only part of this building that has an upstairs. And uh, it's not been converted, but it has the potential, I think, to offer an extra bedroom if you need it. I'm gonna take you up there now. Uh, these stairs are definitely not the most, to remember where the light switches, folks, there we go. These stairs are definitely not the most safe, but uh, it does have electricity, it does have floorboards. So this is the upstairs section of the original station house. It's very hot up here, of course, because it's August right now. Um, but it has a floor, it has a window, and it has the potential, if it was converted, to be uh, a little attic bedroom. So it does need a lot of work, lots of rendering and, and things to be done, but uh, it could be an extra bedroom. So this is the extension on the east side, and well, it's not quite finished. Um, structurally, it seems to all be there. Uh, the walls have all been plastered again, all lime rendered, and uh, the floor is done, everything's painted, but it doesn't quite make sense in terms of how it's being used. Um, if you have kids, then what I would personally do is turn this room in the east extension of the house into their bedroom, and then I'd have this open area here, which connects, as you can see, uh, to the original uh, station house as a playroom or a kid's room of some description. It's a big open space. It also connects directly to the outside and uh, it would make a perfect sort of kid's play uh, area with their bedroom just through here. Or potentially, a, I guess, a kind of annex for a relative like a, a grandmother or something like that. Um, it could be if you fitted a kitchen in here um, which I think the current owner was considering doing, it could be quite uh, autonomous from the rest of the house. The design of this extension is very unusual. Very unusual indeed. In fact, everything about this house is very unusual. There's nothing more exciting for me than looking through another smallholder's workshop. Look at all these tools, they're absolutely amazing. And remember, all these things are included with this property. Gosh, and it's so organized. I wish my workshop was that organized. I wish I had a workshop. There's definitely no shortage of space in this house. I guess technically it's, it's only got one bedroom that's an actual bedroom, but there's another room that could certainly be turned into a bedroom and there's that attic space which could be a third bedroom um i don't know quite how it would be labeled if it was uh, being described by an estate agent <laughs> maybe as a three bedroom or a two bedroom i'm not sure but it's it's pretty big it's pretty big don't be fooled by how it looks on the outside this video is sponsored by nordvpn and wherever you live in the world or plan to move to, even if it's a cottage like this in the woods, NordVPN will protect your internet connection from malware and malicious ads. It'll prevent your IP from being tracked and it'll make it virtually impossible for you to be hacked. I've been using it now for over eight years and I would not go back. NordVPN is incredibly easy to set up. Download the app and within a click or two, you're up and running. Absolutely no technical knowledge is required and it can be installed on just about any device too, including your phone, be it Android or Apple, and your computer, be it Windows or Mac, tablet, or even your Android smart TV. And yes, you can run it on up to six devices at the same time, so your entire house can be connected. You can connect to any of Nord's 5,400 plus servers in 60 different countries, giving you access to region locked services like BBC iPlayer, one of my favourites, Amazon Prime, Netflix, HBO and many others. I'm an avid rock climbing fan, as many of you will know, and I use NordVPN to watch climbing competitions from around the world, which I wouldn't otherwise be able to watch here in Ireland. Definitely one of my guilty pleasures in life, but we all have those, don't we? If you want to find out more, then follow the link at the top of the description to get a two-year plan with an exclusive deal plus four bonus months free. 
and it's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So these walls are actually a combination of hemp and lime. Um, it's all been done in a very authentic way by the current owner. Um, and that might not appeal to everyone, it's, it's not how a modern house would be built, but it's very, very sustainable and it's done in a way that um, creates excellent ventilation. So there'll be no damp issues in this property um, and I can't see any evidence of that. It's really, really well made. Um, it's just a bit unconventional, very, very unusual. I think that's the best word to describe it. You can see the owner has been very creative in uh, how they've constructed this extension. They've used decking uh, under the roof there. You don't see that very often. Very uh, ingenious, I have to say. If it works, why not? So this, I think, is where the original train line would have run. Right next to the uh, property, of course. It's not there anymore, but isn't it amazing to think that this was once a train line? Incredible. There are so many old train lines like this in Ireland that have been abandoned and uh, are no longer in use, of course, since the advent of cars. But you can see, I think, where it would have run along here. So right here, folks, is where the original platform of the train would have been. Uh, down there would have been the train line, and this would have been where the passengers sat and waited. I think. Um, all of that in that direction is extension, as is that in that direction. The original house is just this part here. Uh, it's many, many times bigger now than it would have originally been because of these extensions that have been added. But it's bizarre to me to think that a hundred years ago people would have come here and purchased tickets to get on a train that would have passed right by here. Gosh, what a strange thought. And these original stones, I've seen all of that. Oh, if stone could talk, eh? So this is the workshop, and um, you can see the legacy of all the work that the current owner put in to extend and restore the original station house. Most of it, I believe, was done by um, the owner themselves. And to do that, you need one heck of a lot of tools, and this is where they all are. It's in reasonably good condition, although the corrugated steel roof is rusting a bit. One thing that you have to be aware of with this property is that there is a lot of stuff. Um, there's definitely the legacy of uh, someone creating a small holding here. Lots of tools, equipment, materials, timber, steel, um, loads and loads of things. And this property needs someone that sees those things which will be sold with the house as a resource. Because they are, they're a tremendous resource. If you are handy and you can turn them into something else, you can use them, then it's an absolute treasure trove. It would be heartbreaking, I think, for someone to come here and just take all this stuff and get rid of it. Um, because it has enormous value if uh, you are a small holder. One thing you have to do all the time is fix things and build things, repair things. Um, admittedly, there's some trash here as well, but plenty of valuable resources for the right person. It's been a long time since this polytunnel has been used to grow vegetables. Um, I think even in recent years, it's more been used for storing and processing timber. Um, you're almost certainly gonna want to replace the plastic, but that's fairly cheap. Um, the steel looks really sturdy and strong. So you've got the structure of a polytunnel um, and you could probably use it as it is um, if you don't want to replace the plastic. It just doesn't look very good, but um, if it was me, I'd replace that, keep the hoops, keep it in this position, and do something with that floor. Get all the weeds out, all the timber, everything else, and turn it back into a food-growing polytunnel rather than a storage and wood-cutting polytunnel. So 
So when you visit this property, there are two things on the land at least, which really stand out. Number one, there are bees everywhere because there are hives everywhere. Number two, apples, bees and apples. There are hundreds and hundreds of apples right now on dozens of trees. I don't know how many I've lost count, but uh, if you like making things with apples and eating apples, uh, potentially with honey, then <laughs> this is the property for you because they're everywhere. There aren't just apple trees, there are plum trees and mirabelle trees, uh, all sorts of currant bushes. It's definitely high yielding. I could spend hours walking around this property just trying to identify all the different species of tree and plant. It's obviously been a labour of love by the um, current owner over the last several decades planting uh, all these different trees. And of course now they're mature so you basically have a ready-made forest surrounding your house and a very diverse and unusual one too. If these parts were cleared and a bit less covered in nettles, it would be a very enjoyable <laughs> place to walk around. In fact, you could probably charge people to come and walk through this woodland, make a nature trail. There are so many trees here. I can see horse chestnut, fir and pine trees, apple, of course, uh, willow trees, so many different species, birch, um, older, and most of them have been planted by the current owner. It's incredibly diverse, and you really get the sense that nature is thriving here. It's very, very alive. So many birds and insects. What a beautiful place to live. Of course, there's also plenty of these brambles ready to rip your arms off. So if you do come and visit, Precautions, unlike me. Ah, we've made it all the way to the the old static caravan. Goodness me, folks, this has definitely seen better days. It looks like the roof's collapsed and the wall is all bowing out. I don't think this could be resurrected at this point. Uh, I guess you could use the the metal sheeting for some other purpose but in terms of uh, turning it back into a accommodation of some sort I think uh, those days are gone. So this is the only area on the land that doesn't have trees on and I can't get into it it's just too high even with my uh, wellies but you can see behind me there's an area of maybe about 50 to 100 square meters um, of just very, very overgrown weeds. It's sheltered, it would make a great vegetable area if you cleared all those weeds. Um, but right now, the trees rule on this property. So this is the only area really, unless you cut a lot of trees down, um, that you could have either for growing vegetables or as pasture for animals. Can you believe this is the fifth dream cottage which I featured on my channel. Go check out the other videos if you haven't already. But I think this is also the most unusual. That word keeps coming up, doesn't it? Uh, and that's going to make the next part of this video quite challenging because it's time now for my self-sufficiency scores, focusing on food, water, warmth, shelter, access and income. The question I want to answer does this property offer you the potential to quit the rat race and become self-sufficient? Let's start with food. Well, the three acres of land here definitely constitute what I would call a food forest. There is, according to the owner, more than a hundred food producing trees and bushes planted here. And walking around, I can well believe it, though I didn't count them, folks. But with more than 25 years to mature, that's a ready-made harvest every summer. And yes, there is a polytunnel too, although as you've seen, it does require work. You could also certainly keep small livestock like chickens and ducks, which would thrive under the tree cover here. But there isn't really space to graze anything larger than that. So if you want to keep sheep, goats, horses, cows, uh, well, unless you want to cut down a lot of trees, that is, 
this probably isn't the property for you. We mustn't forget though, those beehives. As long as you're feeling brave, that's another ready-made harvest. I counted at least five hives on this property. I think I'm gonna have to give it a four out of five for food. The only thing for me that's missing is a substantial field or pasture. But arguably, what you get in its place makes up for that. Next, water. An easy one because it's on tap and in Ireland, it's free. Five out of five for water. Warmth. Well, not only does this property have three acres of mature and semi-mature woodland, including a great many uh, native hardwood varieties excellent for firewood, but it also has a reconditioned Stanley stove connected to five radiators in a very well insulated hemp and lime rendered house. So could you be self-sufficient for heating? Absolutely, five out of five. Now for shelter. Although this is the most unusual property I think I've ever viewed uh, in its design and layout, it is also undeniably a complete livable home right now. It has water, electricity, insulation throughout, uh, double glazed windows, drainage, a fully fitted a beautiful kitchen, a utility area and bathroom, and of course central heating. The extension on the west side nearest me here uh, is finished and quite spectacular, by cottage standards at least, especially that kitchen. The extension on the east side, well, it doesn't quite know what it wants to be at this stage, but structurally it's all there too. And the station house, uh, sandwiched in the middle, has been lovingly preserved. There's only one functioning bedroom at the moment, but the potential for at least two more in existing rooms. There is also a substantial workshop area outside. I have to give it five out of five for shelter. Access now, and this property runs alongside a fairly quiet road. I've noticed maybe five to 10 cars passing by every hour. You do hear them though from the house in spite of these trees. But we're on high ground. There are no rivers or lakes within a kilometer of here. So no risk of flooding that I can see at least, despite being in rainy County Leitrim. The driveway, however, is narrow. You might struggle with deliveries because of the overhanging trees and lack of parking space. Um, I'm sure once upon a time, there was much more space around here, but it's very heavily overgrown at the moment. If it was me, I think I'd create a gravel area round the house uh, for parking and turning. I'm gonna give it three out of five for access, but that's definitely something you could easily improve. Income, last of all. And uh, because I think most people who watch my channel are like me, interested in quitting the rat race and escaping a conventional life, having some means of making an income to pay for those things which you can't self-produce is of course very important. One of the greatest assets you have here is a lot of fruit and a lot of honey. And I think turning that into high quality items which you could sell locally or even through the internet is a potential small scale business for the right person. This is also quite a touristy location. The vales and forests are spectacular in this part of Ireland. So potentially converting that east extension at the far end uh, into an independent holiday let might work well too especially if you don't need that space yourself. I've heard that there is talk of converting parts of the old train line into a cycle path, which could also be a draw for potential visitors. And I'm sure the forest garden would be too, if properly maintained. I'm gonna give it four out of five for potential income. I definitely see opportunities here. So who would Garadi Station House with its two extensions and three acres of forest garden suit? Is it for you? Well, this property has some pretty big history attached to it. I'm told that every year several people appear on the door interested in taking a photo of the old station house. So someone who appreciates that history and loves the idea of being personally connected to it. And indeed, creating the next chapter in its story. Then of course, there's the three acres of woodland, uh, which many of us, myself included, dream of having. If you've always wanted to live in a cottage in the middle of a forest, like something uh, from a Germanic fairy tale, then this certainly offers that, with some notable compromises, like the proximity to that road, and lack of any substantial open areas. 
This property comes with a lot of stuff too, as you've seen, so it would suit someone who sees treasure and opportunity, and I think who wants to broadly continue the same lifestyle as the current owner. The house is ready to move into, with enough potential bedrooms for a small family, but I think it might better suit a retired individual or couple who really value the privacy that it offers. Finally, my favourite part of these videos, as you all know, if I were to buy this cottage and land, what would I personally do here? Well, having an established permaculture woodland is so rare, I think I'd make that my primary focus. I'd go all in trying to create a highly productive food forest. That would involve a lot of pruning, cutting back, planting some new species in here, uh, maybe even introducing livestock too, perhaps even small pigs in fenced areas within the woodland. And of course, harvesting and processing of food, that would be a big job every year. The cottage I'd turn into a family home because, well, I think it deserves it, and I think children would absolutely love running around in these trees. There are so many places to create dens and play hide and seek. I don't think they'd ever get bored living here. Saying that, the very first thing I'd do, probably before even unpacking my bags, is cut back a lot of those nettles and brambles and make this beautiful woodland a bit more accessible than it is right now. This property, though magical, it does feel a bit forgotten. I can feel it almost pleading to be lived in and loved once again. I think that's what Garrity Station House needs more than anything. Okay folks, that brings us to the end of yet another Dream Cottage video here in rural Ireland. Remember, if you are interested in this property, you will find contact details down in the description. Please contact the seller directly. It's been an absolute pleasure exploring what is, uh, I'm going to say it one more time, such an unusual property and piece of land. I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you as always for watching, subscribing and supporting my channel in the many ways that you do. From me, here in County Leitrim, not rainy for once, to you wherever you are in the world, take care and bye for now. Job and home to call our own will work as another.